What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. Um, the recently, the two, two every two weeks episode. We have a new one this week. This one is with Tony, um, who is a photographer, videographer, film videographer. I'm not going to introduce him. I'm going to let himself introduce himself because I'll probably do a bad job. Um, <laughs> how about you just give us a general backstory? You know, your name, your age, where you live, uh, and all that stuff. My my man. <laughs> hey guys, um, my name is Tony Lee. I'm 19 years old. Um, I live in Mississauga, but I was born in Kitchener. And no, 19? Are you 20 this year? Or are you 19 next year. next year? Okay, so you're yeah. one year younger than me. I just really? turned 20. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! What, how old did you think I was? Like 21, 22? Nah, nah, bro. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nice try, though. And that's a compliment, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, but sorry. So Mississauga, uh, Toronto. Yeah, I'm yeah, uh, um, in Toronto a lot, but um, I live in Mississauga. How far is that? Because honestly, a, I don't know. Uh, from Mississauga to, to, to Toronto? Toronto, yeah. It's about 25-minute drive, 30. That's not bad. If it's rush hour, then it could be like an hour and a half. Yeah, so. I think rush hour can be <laughs> yeah. an hour a lot in Toronto. It's the worst, man. <laughs> um, where did you grow up here in Canada? Yeah, in Mississauga. Okay, and uh, yeah, I grew up. In, I was born in Kitchener, lived there for two years, then I moved to Brampton for two years, and then I've been living in Mississauga ever since. Damn, you moved around a mm-hmm. lot, kind of a lot. At least it's not yeah. that far, though. You you've You've moved around like it's all within like an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. And and what are you what are you doing right now exactly? So you said you're in before we were talking about you're in school for policing. Yeah, I'm in policing. Um, what where? Yeah, Humber College. I don't know that one. Honestly, I don't know a lot of colleges, <laughs> so I don't yeah, know a lot of. Uh, my campus <laughs> is just based outside of Toronto. Okay. Do you like, like it there? Uh, like the school, just you know, uh, let's let's a general the the school and the program. What are your thoughts uh, on that? How I are you mean, enjoying it? I used to want to be a cop, but you know, I have other plans. So I feel mm-hmm. like you know, with being um, a police officer, I feel like it when you take police foundation, it's not just becoming a cop. Yeah. Sorry. You know, it it okay. kind of, it kind of, you know, branches out. It's kind of just the, the starter, you know, like the basic program you need to take. Do you, sorry. Do you have an idea of which one you want to branch out to? Uh, just a police officer. Just a police officer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's but, like, it branches out, but we're going to stick with the police. Yeah. We're going to stick to that one <laughs> just to be safe. <laughs> but How, yeah, it's more like a plan B for now. Yeah. Okay. Well, when, when, so you were a kid, you wanted to be a police officer and you also do photography on the side. So is that like mm-hmm. something you want to, like, what's your plan there? It's kind of like half and half or like um, hopefully all photography. Yeah. Like I was thinking I was like, my plan right now is I want to get into doing videography. Okay. So what I really like to do is, um, so last year I have two friends, one went to Rome one went to uh, Costa Rica, oh, nice. and um, they basically they uh, borrowed my camera, and they went over there for a vacation, and then they filmed their clips, and then I did my filming in Toronto, so I kind of put all all of the clips into one video Damn. and called it my 2019 video. <laughs> As I was your camera out in Rome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My camera's traveled clip. more than I have. That's the sad part. <laughs> <laughs> That's still cool though. And yeah. was that was that like the first time you got into video? Um, or the first time you started editing a video, or have you been doing it before? I've done it before. So like, I really started doing video in March, but the first time I did video was December of 2018. Okay, I, I just did. I had like this really uh, small project to film for. Uh, my high school's girls volleyball team <laughs> <laughs> and the video is trash so we're not going to talk it's about right, that right, right. <laughs> let's get let's get into the back the back back story when when did all the photography and video start like what what kind of kid were you what were you said your dream as a kid was to be a police officer like the whole time yeah and then for the when, main part sorry for the main part yeah for the main part okay 
And then when did you like find photography and video? Like how did that origin story kind of start for you? Well, ever since I was a kid, like ever since I was like four, I've always been Damn. into arts. So it started off with like drawing. Oh. And then, you know, my dad can draw really good. So he <laughs> taught me how to do that. And then that, that's funny because a lot of photographers I ask are like, like, obviously I haven't done a huge sample, but a lot of them are the opposite of you where they're like, they never were good at art kind of thing. Really? So it's interesting. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's funny. Cause like, I think one thing is like, like, were you like good, good at art or you just like enjoyed art <laughs> in your opinion? I'd say both. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, both. Like, I think if you're good, you should try. <laughs> but I think I think a lot of like when you're growing up, a lot of teachers say like if you don't like draw it perfectly, then like you're wrong. And then a lot of people get swayed away mm. from art and yeah, think they're yeah. trash. Like I swear, half of my art class thought they were terrible at drawing art. They're like, like anytime you ask someone, can you draw? They're like, I can draw stick man. You know. What <laughs> <I mean? laughs> That's most of my friends, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I, but I feel then, like, so left out because I'm the only artistic person. <laughs> but, but then people have to realize, like, yeah, you're the artistic person, so obviously you know that for sure. But yeah. some people, even if they're not that artistic, they can still be good at other forms of art. Of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. But sorry, back to your origin story. You were four and you drew, you were a drawer. Yeah. And then how did how did it just your whole life you were kind of you knew that you were an artist yeah for sure because you know I see a lot of my other friends like especially during high school um I just really started to develop my photography um about three years ago and that's when I started to get into it and then okay. most of my friends are like you know like math nerds and all that and science and yeah. stuff like that business whatever and I was just like you know, I'm a bit different. And then I, I just felt like I, I feel like I should be different and just kind of, kind of continue my route. There's a beauty in that, like being in a friend group that everyone is kind of like different. Like, I don't know how yeah. diverse your friend group was, but then like, you know, yeah. there's like variety and you can take inspiration from other things. Yeah, like, I don't know if you're sure. inspired by something from math or something like that <laughs> <laughs> but no it, it's it's cool and it's actually it's at one it's hard to to be like i'm gonna do different yeah, you know of what course. i because mean? you don't think they're gonna accept you or, or something yeah. along those lines when exactly did uh did you start like did you get your first first camera um it was probably like right it was probably like may or june of 2017 mm -hmm. um that's when my parents got me my first camera. I had the Canon T6. Dude, I think we started almost around the same time. Really? No, I think I was a bit earlier than you. Just a couple months? January. So six months before you. Yeah. Does, is that six months? January? J January to uh, June is like six months, I think. More or I less. Know. Yeah, I think it was January 2016. What was your first camera? It was my sister's old camera. It was a Rebel T, a Rebel XSI. It was like the oldest thing ever. I yeah. think it was only shoot like seven. <laughs> Even I don't recognize it. Yeah, no, it was the the shutter button barely worked half the time. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, back back to you. So you got this camera, and yeah. why did you get the camera? Were you like, I just want to try photography, or did you like see photos around you and you're like, uh, well, um. So my family was planning a trip to Vietnam because that's where they're from. Yeah. And they haven't been back home. So we went 2017 yeah. to Vietnam, but it's been before that, it's been like 15 years since they went back Damn. and, you know, their whole family's there. So I thought, you know, we, I should get a proper camera and take photos of like moments like these. Yeah. Important so, moments. So yeah, important moments. And, um, for the main part, in the beginning, it was just like family portraits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I did a little street photography, but I didn't know anything about aperture or anything. Yeah. So like none of those photos came out good. <laughs> a, lot, 
I, it's a lot of new photographers. It's usually family portraits because the family's yeah. always like, "Take photos." Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and even still now to this day, like every time yeah. I, every time some events happening, my mom's like, "Can you take photos of the event?" <laughs> I'm like, "I don't know." Because yeah, we're the younger generation, we know how to use this stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then after the trip, you came back and you're like, "Let me keep keep yeah. doing this." Yeah. Yeah, I thought I I started watching videos on like night photography that like Peter McKinnon put out and I thought it was so cool but yeah like I started doing night photography and street photography was that like the thing that pretty much got you into it like you know because there's always that one type of photography every Mm. photographer likes the most that starts Mm. the journey was it the night photography yeah for sure like um like the long exposure ones and downtown and then like the cars go by and then you see this that that string of light yeah. i thought that was so cool dude <laughs> that, honestly i i think that was the first kind of photos i took too and then up here in canada it's cold that night i don't know you started in june but i think i started in the winter time mm. so we would go out in like the freezing cold and take long exposure <laughs> photography yeah yeah <laughs> and our, our fingers would be freezing off um okay so you did photography and then the video you said started about two years ago one year ago yeah okay actually yeah exactly like two years ago i probably finished the video my first video for your high school Mm -hmm. yeah damn and then ever since you've been having a blast eh oh yeah for sure (laughs) well not not in this past year (laughs) Uh, yeah obviously not in this past year um so you do film photography which i Mm -hmm. think is going to be the main subject of this uh podcast because it's really interesting and yeah. I, you don't you don't see a lot of film photographers obviously it is something a little more popular now but still like people usually you know they don't do it legitimate they kind of like bend the rules by either adding oh, a yeah, filter after sure. yep. or yep. using an app um, yep. and things like that they're not actually like you know mm-hmm. doing the fucking process because i've done it as long yeah. how did when did that transition period into film happen or was that always film photos uh, um I got, well, I got my first film camera around last year in October. Okay. And the reason being was because I was looking through a a photo book, like my family's photo album. And I saw this, uh, this one book that was dedicated to my uncle who passed away like 10 years ago and uh this guy had a whole film camera store back in vietnam and like Damn. he sold prints and stuff like that so he's like the og you know the og bro yeah the og i Rest think I actually i think i saw a picture of that on your instagram yeah it was the one was it your was dad a, and your uncle yeah my dad yeah. and my uncle and yeah, he okay. was it was that picture that i saw you know this guy had slick fucking hair back you know <laughs> belt dress pants <laughs> dress shirt and he's holding the like a camcorder or something like a yeah. fun camcorder and i thought that was so that was so sick uh, i see it i'm looking at it right now yeah it'll yeah. be up on screen for people yeah <laughs> yeah and so, that pretty much inspired you to start doing the film yeah. photos yeah. yeah and then i saw some of the other pictures uh in the book were that he actually took and some of them were family photos but some of them were just like there was one where um it was just like in a field of like flowers and there's like a, a little um, little uh, stream running behind it. And there's like just one pretty like bird flying away, you know, some, and I, 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 I thought there, that dude. was so sick. <laughs> what do you what do you think it is about the film photos that you love so much? You think it's like the nostalgicness and like the connection to like your uncle? <clears throat> or do you think it's just like, I don't know, I don't know, like the look. What do you think? What do you think is the reason? Well, and what do you think the reason a lot of people like them too? Because because it's popular nowadays. Yeah, well, you know, there's always those chicks that have like a a Fuji uh, disposable. Yeah, think they know all about film. (laughs) I was literally talking to this uh, with someone last week, or Zoe. Do you know Zoe? Yeah, yeah. Have you met her? No, I just know of her. Okay, okay, but she. We were talking and she was, one point she made was like, is a film photo good because it was shot on film or like, it, or sorry, is a photo good because it was shot on film or like, you know, like it's just mm. a photo. And I find that with a lot of film photos is like, you just take a picture of a wall and people are like, oh my God, oh my God, it's the best photo ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But, um, but sorry, back to you. You can talk. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, with film, there's a lot of aspects which makes it really kind of important to me. One being is like, <clears throat> like I look up to my uncle a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, even though I haven't met him many times, my aunt always tells me about him, and she tells me, um, "You resemble like you remind me of your uncle a lot." You know, like with photography and just the way he carries himself. And um, I feel like I'm just kind of taking over. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that puts you a know? smile on my face, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're taking over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Just, kind of carry he on. sounds like a cool guy honestly yeah he was the nicest most humble guy you'll ever meet yeah from what i can remember it, it sucks when you don't get to meet people like that but at the same time oh, yeah. you, you just kind of know what they're like like my mm. i never met my great grandfather but i made a book on him and after like seeing like in grade i think it was like grade six it was like a picture book or something like that <laughs> but then like after <laughs> writing the book like, you just learn so much about them and you kind of you can kind of yeah. see how they act through other people. yeah like i always think about you know like me and my uncle would have been like great friends you know like we would have had a lot to talk about mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely mm-hmm. it's like a mentor <clears throat> but like like a emotional men- like yeah. a ment yeah a mental mentor Does that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Like okay. I haven't learned anything from him, but I have, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also like he's an inspiration to yeah. you who who pushes you and things like that, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um so let's go into the process behind shooting film. Like what does your workflow look like? I know it can be complicated. Um do you have your own dark room? Do you get probably get <clears throat> places to process for you? Yeah. Uh, we'll just go like start to finish uh and you can say what camera you use and things like that too. Um <clears throat> well First is I get my roll of film from a place called Millennium Photos. I've been going to them ever since. Um, so first off, I get film which you can use in daylight. So is Millennium diff- Photos? Sorry, is Millennium Photos like a local, like a little yeah, local shop? Yeah. Like a little local shop. Yeah, love those places. Yeah, it reminds me of my uncle and <laughs> aunt. So like that's why I go there. <laughs> Is that like a dream of yours to like start a little film shop like that? Or is it more like you'd rather be a photographer? Oh, you see, my friends have been telling me you should, you should open a film camera store. You should do like, it's a dying industry. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Sorry. Okay. But sorry, back to the, back to the workflow. (laughs) I chose a side question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just kind of, I bought, usually I buy, um, the Fuji Pro H400 or the Portra 400, those yeah. are like the two most professional uh, rolls of film you can kind of get. Is there like difference between the different films? Like honestly, I've I've done, I've shot film before, but I was just like, <laughs> mm. I was head over, like I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, so some films, they kind of give off like a different hue of color. Okay. Like some more orange or green or purple, blue, whatever. And, you know, with the... Um, the ones I use compared to some of the roles you can get at like the Walmart's photo section, like the yeah. Kodak gold, like I've used them all. And like the Kodak gold from Walmart, it just does not have any color. You know, it's just super it's like, like gray unsaturated. And yeah. Yeah. Like okay. unsaturated. Hmm. So, <clears throat> do, do those films come with like a higher price tag usually though? Like the yep. ones used. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So Kodak gold is like, you know, nine dollars, and then the Fuji Pros are like uh, twenty to twenty-five dollars. Which one do you think? Oh, twenty to twenty-five dollars, and that's like for how many picks? Uh, thirty-six, 36. thirty-four. <laughs> that's not bad. Um, which one would you recommend? Do you think to people who are starting out? Starting out, um, I mean, every role like it. It's the same, like you it does use the, the job, same. right? Yeah, yeah, it does the job. But if you want the best pictures and like really get that film look and like the right amount of grain, yeah, then I would recommend Portra because Portra is like, um, I think it's like just twenty dollars or okay. maybe a little less. So it's it's in the sweet spot. Okay, you hear yeah. that, Portra? If you're trying to get into film. Portra 400. Okay, so once you got your film, you load it into the camera, which is one of the hardest things I, to do. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> now it's easy, but before, oh my God. <laughs> Wait, really? It's easier now or, or are you just because of practice? Kind yeah, because of, of practice. Okay, yeah, okay, for okay. sure. Yeah, don't mess that part up. Um, 
how do you go about like selecting your shots for film? Because that's one thing when I had my film camera, especially having a digital and a film camera, it's like most of the times you don't even bring the film camera because you're like, I don't want to spend like every shot is like mm. money, you know, mm-hmm. for sure. Thing. So how do you kind of like select your shots? Um, when do you shoot film? Like are you, I guess you're always shooting film when you go take photos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like uh, I usually just drive around um, downtown and do like a little photo walk. Classic. And um, so like, every, like you said, like every shot costs you money. So, you know, you have, you have to really compose your shot really well mm-hmm. and make it perfect because yeah. every shot counts, right? So unlike digital, you know, you hold down the shutter button, you get like <laughs> 600 photos on a digital card. That's the beauty though of it. Cause like you really have to think about composition and yeah. it really pushes yeah. you to kind of, For sure. uh, but then I feel like, again, coming back to Zoe's point from last week is like out at some points, like some people just shoot anything and it can look good because it's shot mm-hmm. on like a good film or things like that. Yeah. So it's like a balance. Um, it it kind of depends on what you shoot though. Like some people shoot portraits. Um, like I do like hey, what's literally. Your, sorry? sorry. What's your main thing? Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> like I really like shooting like classic American cars. I know. Um, actually, I've seen that. Those are nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, they're fire. <laughs> yeah, classic American cars, and they look really good on film. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's the reason why I do it. I think I don't know. This idea just came in my head, and it sees from your feet is just like shooting things that are like classic OG kind of things. Yeah, where film I think can really stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, because it just kind of like it takes you back, right? Oh yeah, for sure. It's like the nostalgia effect. Yeah, exactly. Like, so. It's like taking you back to a time where you never existed. Yeah. <laughs> but you were, but you took the photo. So it's like, yeah. honestly, that I think that's <laughs> like the main, the coolest thing about film is like kind of like a time machine. Yeah, literally. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of seeing what people would see in like newspapers and stuff back then, you know? Yeah. What's it, what's it, what it is, I think, is seeing what today would look like back then. You know, mm-hmm, yeah. does, that, does that make sense? Like, yeah, that does make sense. Like, for example, all these girls that take film photos and things like that, what they're doing is trying to see, like, obviously it looks sick and all, but like what you're really seeing is like what they would look like back in the day. You know what I mean? Like what yeah. this area would look like back in the day kind of thing, mm-hmm. especially when they do like dress up or some shit and they wear yeah. like old looking. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about film. Like yeah. you kind of you kind of manifest like the seventies in yeah. one photo, you know, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. Yeah. Um, and then you get your photos and where do you process them at the same place? At the same place. Yeah. yeah. How, how long does that take and how expensive? Two to three days. And it's That's like quick. $25 just okay. for a scan. Yeah. So, so what do they do? What are the options when going to a film place? Once you've gotten your f- uh, photos, you take the photos out of the roll Mm-hmm. Or like you can just take the roll out, right? Do you have to mm-hmm. like cover the roll or anything, or you just kind of want to avoid sunlight, right, or something like that? Yeah, you want to d- like avoid any kind of light. Okay. Like the only light, I'm not too sure, but I've watched a video on this, but I'm pretty sure they use like some kind of red light or uh, like a, yeah, 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 a, a dark, dark light or something. Yeah, it's like a. I think it's like the same light that they use in like glow in the dark places. Yeah, like or black light or something. Black I can't light? remember. Yeah. yeah, and then they use some kind of chemical, and then um, they just let the film sit in there for a bit. Okay, and then they dry it. I'm not it, too sure about the whole process. Yeah, okay, but like you, do you, when you go there, you have the option of actually just getting the roll back and then scanning it, or getting them to scan it and send you files. Like, which one do you choose? Um, well, right now because of COVID, what they do is they just scan it and then. They send it um, through a zip file to oh. my email. And they're yeah. all like scanned and ready. To get yeah, it. scanned and ready. Like I just got one right before the call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and did you used to uh, actually get the films rolls themselves and scan yep. them yourself? Yeah. Yep. I have like a whole, I have a shelf with like a whole packet of them. Damn. 
Yeah, it's it's thick, bro. <laughs> I'm sure it gets thick dude, after a while. Yeah, <laughs> the film takes space, money, and everything, but in everything. the end, <laughs> it's unique. <laughs> it's so worth it. <laughs> okay, well that's sick. And do you ever do any retouching after you get the role, or or is it just oh natural? Um, um, some of them I do retouch. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's a little too dark or too bright. Yeah. That, so yeah, that can happen. Sometimes it's a little too unsaturated. Or like the hues kind of off, or like the way I don't want it. So I just kind of—it's not a lot. Like I just touch it up just a yeah. little bit to that's keep the, th- the authenticity. That's the thing—is like you never really have to do too much yeah. retouching. You can just kind of yeah. do. You just want to keep it authentic as possible, especially because you can't see the photo right after. You right. know, so sometimes like your ISO or I don't even know your. <laughs> that's one thing. How does the ISO work on a film camera? You have to set it to your film roll ISO, or can you play with it when you're shooting? Um, so yeah, you set it to your film's ISO. Okay. And then there's, well, for mine, I don't know what about others, but okay. mine's on the automatic setting. Okay. And there's a built-in light meter that you can see, and all you have to do is um, change your aperture on the lens. Yeah. Okay. And then the light meter goes from like a thousand shutter speed to like one. And then it kind of depends if you want it like at a good, if you're in daylight, right? Yeah. And the light meter is telling you um, a thousand, you switch your aperture till the other light goes to a thousand. So that way it's not too overexposed, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I think mine has something similar where you can just kind of play with the aperture and then it'll tell you what you need to do yeah. your shutter speed yeah. at or something like that mm-hmm. um but yeah no it's never easy and film like if you're just gonna hop in and that's your first type of photography it's definitely g- can be tough because oh, yeah, you need sure. to understand the manual settings and how they work yeah um but you only have like two of the exposure triangles <clears throat> to play with because you can't touch the iso right right yeah so i guess it can be simpler in a way but at the same time Oh. It it really you know it's intimidating at first because yeah. everything was automatic on my uh, Canon yeah exactly. I had a Canon sixty you know before yeah. and then you switch to manual it's like oh shit I have to learn everything now it takes a lot more time too because yeah, like your sure. every photo you're you're doing but yeah. in the end the pro the the photos can be amazing mm-hmm. um, do you do film videos as well have you ever done mm-hmm. that I've only done one. Uh, so right now I have, um, I have a regular eight. Damn. And then. Man pulled out a relic. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I have a super eight. So how does this work, dude? Can you just like break it down? Like, do you just stick a film roll in there and then it, like you record, you have like 30 minutes of recording or something like that? Oh no, it's not 30 minutes. It's, uh, it's like roughly about seconds? three minutes. <laughs> Okay, three minutes, but it's like yeah. per roll three minutes. Uh, yeah. And is there just a simple record button kind of on it? Uh, yeah. For the super eight and the regular eight, you just have to like kind of click a trigger. Okay. And then for the regular, it's more like um, it works more like the, the film camera. Like everything's manual. Okay. So you have to adjust the aperture like to the lighting. There's yeah, no yeah. light meter in this, so it's a. It was really hard. But There's no this, light meter, so it's kind of like you just have to guess. I don't even know to be honest. Like the the lady that sold it to me, uh, she gave me a manual like how the light meter works or like the lighting. Okay. And it just did not make sense. Okay, it's so, just like, confusing. I, I'm sure yeah. there's a way to do it, but it seems just like really I just, confusing. I just went based off like guessing, dude. <laughs> well, that's what you have to do, especially when it's like a completely new piece of gear. But, yeah. So you press the record button, and is it the same rolls you use as the film cameras or separate rolls? Uh, it's different. So okay. for the Super 8, here, I'll open this. You don't, you don't have to open it. It's going to ruin the film roll. Oh, no. I don't have any film right now. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. You open the door, and then there for this one, it's kind of like a, a square-shaped cassette, kind of. Okay, yeah. And with this one, it's really simple. You just It's like a plug-and-play. You just put it in. Okay. And then there's a built-in light meter, and then you just kind of... You just shoot. You just shoot. Start, pew, pew, pew. Yeah. It's like a yeah, gun, dude. Yeah, exactly. It's super easy. <laughs> it looks like that, those things that... Uh, the the policeman try to track your speed with oh yeah the, the speed gun <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I bring this in public and people are like what the fuck is that bro <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and then as far as processing those things go, how does that work? Is it the same store? Oh, man. Um, no. It's the processing for, like, video film is super, like, there's barely any. And it's really tedious. Okay. So, but you've gotten it done. Where did you get it done? Um, Some black not, market. Not, <laughs> it's, it, it probably is because it was some dark alleyway bro the little tiny little store but yeah the place is called niagara custom labs okay. or something like that i'm sure not all the cities have was it in toronto yeah yeah it's probably in toronto deep yeah. in toronto somewhere and then yeah. you just give them the cassette and they send you like the zip file same thing pretty much yeah um but the thing that pissed me off was so I was shooting a, a summer video, kind of. Okay. Uh, like, I started shooting the video in, like, March, and yeah. it, I finished the, the role in, like, August. And then uh, I That's went to get good, it developed. Honestly, three minutes of... <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, three minutes. And um, I gave it to the processing lab, and it took them two to three weeks to develop it. Which was I, I thought I think that's normal. Yeah, that seems. But then, um, what's it called? It came back uh, like blank, like they used the wrong kind of chemical. In oh, so they fucked video. up. <laughs> they, they fucked up super hard. Ah, that sucks. So I'm sure yeah. you've had a bad experience then with the film video, and is that reason why you haven't done it, or it's just way too expensive? It's it's probably both. Yeah. Like it costs like this video project costed me around like over 150 oh my god for a video <laughs> the film was like 80 bucks and then the developing was like 90 so it was more like 170 yeah and it came out blank you got nothing from it was I it like, blank blank or was it like a bit of footage i got like 15 seconds which you can barely see i think yeah. i saw that video it was like all like red and things like that yeah it was like orange and then you just see a glimpse yeah, I'm looking at it right now. That's that sucks. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's it's cool that you actually went ahead and and, and tried it because yeah, not a lot of people do that. Do you think you'll ever ever try it again in the future? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I was talking to uh, my high school teacher who was like uh, my comm tech teacher. Mm -hmm. So we did like photography and stuff in our class. So we still keep in touch. Um, she gave me a new uh, place where they process like super eight film. Yeah. So I definitely want to try the, uh, that out. Um, you know, I was thinking about going to band for like Iceland or Switzerland next year. So I definitely want to film again. I think that's the coolest thing to do would be bring a super eight on a trip. Oh yeah. And for sure. limit yourself to three minutes of footage and see if you mm -hmm. can create something. Uh, yeah which is amazing and especially it'll give that nostalgic super nostalgic oh, yeah. feel yeah dude. it's like a nice heartwarming home video you know yeah exactly that's amazing yeah. um okay next question here why did you choose film over more popular methods was it because of your uncle like what what do you think swayed you towards the film so, side? because honestly digital is so easy and yeah a lot of people yeah, just I agree just go to that <laughs> yeah, yeah you agree why do you think you do film uh mainly right now um well before i got my film camera mm -hmm. uh what i was mainly doing was like portraits for people and like i enjoyed it to some extent yeah. like and i think they came out really nice on the digital but it just wasn't for me it was like missing I, something yeah, like it, it's I, like there was nothing much that was inspiring me to do it, you know. And One thing I, I find with film. portraits is like they're all kind of like same, 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 same. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So you know? being able to get that film and kind of like like just give it a completely different vibe, you know. What yeah, I mean? like you can take portraits on film, sure, but there's like I don't know. I do like street photography. Yeah, take photos of things that just aren't significant, things that you walk past every day, you know. And it just kind of solidified. Yeah. No, okay, yeah. No, I see what you mean. Like, it's just the photography you were doing was kind of missing that. Um, yeah. That little something. You know, that little something that makes it kind of different. Yeah, and there's yeah, a lot of I repetition. I kind of bored of portraits. Yeah. Well, that's one you know? thing is like there's... And that's, I think, why I got a film camera is because like, first of all, 
it's a completely different process um mm-hmm. and it, it sure. makes you learn about the history of photography and all that stuff like my mm-hmm. friend once told me i should try pin box photography or pinhole photography have you ever tried that have you heard of that no it's like that? it's like you what have like hell? a hole it's like some some box you create and then it has like a hole and the light comes through the hole it's like creating a camera out of a cardboard box it's like some crazy thing um, <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's, it's, it's how cameras work. It's how cameras work. There's a bunch of, I don't even know. You'd have to search it up, uh, pinhole <laughs> photography. But you learn about the history through film photography. You learn about composition. Oh, yeah. You learn about how it is to really take photos. And you also get that nostalgic feel all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's just like there's just something. You can't put your finger on what makes film photos there's like a certain charm to it that no other digital camera can oh do. you can't recreate it at all people yeah. think they can recreate it and yeah you can create the film feel kind of but like you can tell the difference authentic. you can tell the difference between a digital and a film for sure for sure yeah. easily I don't know I don't know <laughs> um, okay let's where did you learn film how did you learn to do film um, um, so my aunt would always t- give me tips. Like I, I showed her the camera as soon as I got it yeah. through Skype and she just gave me tips on like, you know, not to open the, the back door. Yeah, don't, open the back the door. <laughs> don't open the back door. <laughs> Whatever you do. <laughs> okay. Keep the camera clean and stuff like that. Yeah. But then to really use it and like understand the mechanics like through YouTube and like just practice. Yeah. Definitely. Practice is really important. Was it? Would there? Would you just recommend people to use YouTube uh, if they don't have the aunt to help you out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was lucky. Um, but if you don't have a relative that you know knows how to use a film camera, mm-hmm. um, then definitely YouTube. Like you can use YouTube for anything these days, right? Is there any specific YouTubers you think uh, that are pretty good for learning um, film? learning like how to use a film camera. or just film youtubers in general to watch which ones do you think do you watch uh i, I watch a uh, willem verbeek willem verbeek never yeah. heard of him but uh, uh and joe greer <laughs> joe greer okay well i'm sure people listening to this will mark down those names <laughs> and i'll leave them in the the comments below yeah but uh yeah that's cool honestly what yeah. what, what do they do do they teach film or do they just kind of take film and show their well, process they both just release like some modules, like um, online lessons of okay. them talking about film and like how to shoot and like how to use a film camera and stuff like that. Yeah. But before that, like yeah, they just shoot film. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. It's definitely a hard thing to do, especially honestly. I respect anyone who tries to make a full time job out of shooting film. Yeah. Especially through really, YouTube. It's really hard. Yeah. It's a and like you said earlier, it's a it's a dropping market. Um, yeah, for sure. Because there's like a hype right now, but do you predict the hype staying forever, or will it become like an oversaturated thing with like everything yeah. is just like film is just film? You know what I mean? You never know. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips for people getting into film? Tips. Something maybe you would have wish you you knew when you started honestly tips don't open the back door (laughs) never open the back door (laughs) never open the back door um (laughs) another tip is when you're finish your film and you're pulling the lever to like roll it back into the canister yeah if it's making some kind of weird noise and there's kind of tension when you're when you're pushing the lever um don't worry that's just the film going back in it's not your film ripping apart oh okay you know i I thought you're gonna be like stop don't roll (laughs) (laughs) no no unless you know you can feel like all of a sudden yeah it's really easy then yeah you probably tore the film yeah definitely yeah anything else as far as like processing maybe like getting deals like which do you recommend scanning or do you recommend uh scanning yourself or other people scanning or like depends on the situation I haven't scanned myself, but I feel like if I did, like I would probably fuck up like the first six rolls. <laughs> There's a lot of like chemicals involved and like that can be like a health issue. So is, is scanning different than processing? Um, like isn't yeah. scanning when you're scanning them onto the computer and then processing is like when you're using the chemicals. Chemicals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But have you, have you scanned the photos or have you done neither? 
of those? Uh, neither. Neither. No. Oh, really? You need like a like a specific printer for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I you I think I did it with my film photos once, mm-hmm. but I think they came. They came in like photo form, so I don't know if it actually counts as full scanning because they came in photos and then I just scanned them on the computer. They weren't the actual oh. original film rolls. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that counts. Um. <laughs> We, we can pretend. <laughs> we can pretend that counts. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Just make sure you don't open the back door. Yeah. Crank and, the lever. Uh, um, you know, if if you mess up a few rolls of film, you know, don't don't feel discouraged. Yeah. You know, I sure was after messing <laughs> up like three, but that's part of the learning process. You know, you you make mistakes and then you really learn from them. Yeah. You especially you really learn, and the good thing is like there's money on the line oh, so yeah, like for sure. you're gonna learn dude you're gonna, <laughs> learn. you're gonna make sure you remember <laughs> those mistakes buddy <laughs> trust me <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the funniest thing um <laughs> if you had to choose one because you've done video right with a digital mm-hmm. yeah if you had to choose one photo or video which one do you like more and why do you think like in terms of both digital and film Hmm, making my conflict question more quick. Let's do. Let's start with just digital. If you had the option just for digital fit photo okay. or digital uh, video. Um, video. Video. Yeah. Why do you think video? I agree with it, you, but why do you? I'd like to hear your question. Um, because when you take a photo, you kind of just get one perspective of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like you take a picture of like a water bottle. You don't see anything around it. You just get the wall and the water bottle and the table. Yeah. You know, you take video, you can get a whole bunch of different aspects of it, right? Yeah. And it kind of answers people's questions. And a video lasts longer than a photo. Like, you you look at a photo, it's just like, oh, it's a water bottle. Yeah. But a video, it's like it, it keeps the audience intrigued and, like, kind of curious. Like, I think, I like, I agree with you. I think there's a lot more options of storytelling with video and, you know, mm-hmm. keeping the reader intrigued. But the photo, if you're really good at it, you can create, uh, yeah, kind of like, uh, like you can keep them intrigued as well. Yeah. And it's a lot faster. It's interesting. They're both, I think they're both good, but I do agree that video does have the advantage, especially when you can pair sound with mm-hmm. video and get oh, like yeah. a 360 kind of, yeah, it's a lot more diverse. Yeah. I find photos are very effective when there's like a photo story, you know? Yeah. Multiple photos. You gotta be like really good if you can do actual storytelling with just photos. Mm -hmm. Just photos. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot easier when you have multiple photos because you're able to kind of like, you know, a person walking, a person falling, breaks their leg, you know, kind of like multiple (laughs) photos. And that's what a video is, right? It's just multiple photos. Yeah, multiple photos. Trillions of photos back to back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I find it like if you're really, really good at photography, you can tell a story with one photo, which is probably one of the biggest challenges mm-hmm. of life. <laughs> <laughs> Something I'm still learning. That's that's literally what kind of film photographers do. You mm-hmm. know, you, they take a picture and you just kind of wonder what the story is. That's what Joe Greer does, which I which is why I really like him. I think that's the beauty of the the photos is that yeah. you'll never know the end. Yeah, you know? exactly. You'll always be wondering. What, you know what is this car or whose yeah. car is that for example yeah, for your stuff you know um, yeah that's cool it's definitely mm. cool um, favorite things to shoot you said f- mm. you said street is there like a oh sorry sorry before we get into that question how about for film do you prefer film f- video or film photo oh, that's hard <laughs> that is so hard because you have See, to you have to take into account the processes behind it too, right? Right, right. Like film, video might have the huge advantage in like, I don't know, it's just so nostalgic. But yeah. also, after hearing your story, it sounds like so an tedious. absolute tedious. <laughs> like, sounds oh, crazy. Man. It's like high risk, high reward. Like that's what film video is, you know? Yeah. It's definitely a tough um, thing to get into. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd s- blank, blank answer. You can do a blank answer. They're equal. I guess Let's, you've only done one film video, right? So you don't yeah. have that much experience into the video uh, right. realm. So you can't really exactly make a decision. Yeah, but uh, let's just stay. Let's just stick to photo for now. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think the photos, especially if you're just trying to get into film, is the way to go. Cause you have to oh, yeah, you do not want to start with video, my friend. Because <laughs> <laughs> you need to understand. As far as, like, the, the timeline goes, you should probably do digital photo to digital video to mm-hmm. film photo yeah. to film video. I think that's the best process for anyone who's trying to get into the film video because you need yeah. to understand how the film works. You need to understand how exposure works. You need to understand yeah, how sure. frames work and video editing works. Um, so it definitely is a huge skill to have, especially mm-hmm. because most of the people who used to do it back in the day are either really old and not you know on the market or anything like that. It's not a very asked thing. So the market mm-hmm. is not huge, but also underserved, Yeah, I'd think. Like- even jumping from digital to film, like, you know, it's, it's a big learning curve, Mm -hmm. you know, even with all that digital knowledge, like it's a huge learning curve to go just manual everything, you know? Yeah. Especially cause like everything's done so auto for you nowadays, you know what I mean? So yeah. Switching over like to, I even, my, my film camera came with a manual flash, like a flash trigger. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what the hell? What the hell? How do I use this? So like you go and then it's like literally just like a pin and you press it and it shoots the, it, it pushes the shutter or something like that. It's like crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So learning how the old tech works. Is there new tech f- film cameras? Like are they, are there still companies releasing film cameras or can you only oh, get yeah. old film cameras? You, uh, I know right now um, there's a brand called Leica. Um, they make beautiful German um it's all through German. Uh, it's a German brand. Okay. And the mechanics of their camera is just amazing. I'm pretty sure instead of the shutter being on the right side, it's actually on the left side, which is kind of weird, but it's also cool. And it's Germany, um, dude. Yeah, it's fucking Germany. Everything's on the opposite side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do that. Do you but, know if those come with like auto features? Like, do they have auto exposure on those new cameras? I don't think so. Dude. Yeah. Hmm. No. Interesting. Something yeah, I gotta they look want into. to keep it old school. Well, that's the thing is like there's a beauty in that too, and especially yeah. like if there is auto features on a camera like that, I don't know if people really think about the photos they're taking. Yeah, which can be a good marketing thing. <laughs> like you just add auto Maybe. features so people take more photos and spend more money. <laughs> but it loses its its value. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And its charm, you know, you're taking that away. Yeah. Um, favorite thing to shoot and why? Now we're gonna get to this question. Uh, um. What is it right now, currently? What do you What are you enjoying taking photos of? Uh, you said cars. Is that probably the mm-hmm. the best one? And and why Vintage do you cars. why do you like it? I don't. Well, I like vintage cars. Like my dream car is like a '67 Mustang fastback, you know. And then I'm really into vintage cars, so I keep up a lot with that. Mm-hmm. I don't know vintage yeah. cars that well, so I, I can't really tell you. <laughs> why, why do you think you like the vintage cars so much? Is just because of that nostalgic kind of... Nostalgic, you just... If you have a vintage car, you have a, a good taste in cars, I feel. <laughs> you know, like, you know your history. <laughs> I guess, you that's know? true. You do know your history, especially with anyone who knows anything vintage or mainly vintage things. Yeah. Because us, younger generation, like... Obviously, we're not going to know anything about that. I barely half the people listened in school or something like that. And they didn't Mm -hmm. teach, you know, about vintage cars. So it shows that you've done either extra research into these things or um, your parents told you about it or something like that. No, it was just like, yeah, it was all me. Yeah. Yeah. Like when it was the first time you got into that, like vintage stuff, vintage cars. Or stuff. Cars? Do you have like a lot of vintage stuff? Oh yeah, like my whole my whole uh, uh, wardrobe is like vintage with <laughs> stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, I listen to like uh, classic indie, classic rock stuff Damn. like that. Yeah. For so you be I'm living really in the seventies, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like That's I, cool I'd love I'd love to be existing in those times. Yeah. You know. That's really cool. What do you think was yeah. your What do you think was the best year out of the nineties? Out of the 90s? Not the 90s, the 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Out of the 90s. Um, shit, that's a good question. Like, being a 90s kid would be 
would be cool? Like a teenager in the 90s or the 80s? Because good cars were out. You know, <laughs> good music was out. And, you know, you want a girl, you go pick her up from her house. Yeah, <laughs> classic. You know? Hey, classic. Everything was a lot more classic and genuine back then. Yeah, a lot more simple, too. Like a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, a lot more simple. Like, you know, face to face interactions. Yeah. And it's a huge problem. Especially because, like, the problem with it nowadays is that all the kids grew up in an age where they think it's normal to always be on a phone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. everyone's on a mm-hmm. phone so being able to like change someone's mindset since they were growing up um is really hard and it's cool that mm-hmm. you are into the vintage stuff and respect the, the vintage stuff yeah. because that's something hard to do when you're growing up in an era like this where yeah, you know for sure you're being you're being nurtured everything around you everything you see everything people are talking about is technology technology you know this that this and not like remember your past remember to have good interactions you know yeah it's just like we shouldn't forget about what was given yeah. to us Never. or like what our parents kind of went through you know the process dude you have to always remember and yeah it's like the process of the world like like you have to look it's like looking at yourself you know like your photography mm-hmm. journey you know you were bad mm-hmm. at the start and you're good now now it's like looking at the process of technology and the world and things like that you know we used to uh, have uh, drive these vintage cars now we drive Teslas or whatever um, yeah you know so you have to remember that and it can be useful to remember that yeah motivating yeah. just kind of know where everything came from and appreciate it yeah <laughs> um, traveling how much traveling have you done because you said you gave your um, friends your camera I guess not recently you've traveled but have you traveled in no. the past you said Viet Vietnam right yeah Vietnam yeah um, well, I've been to, like, South Korea, um, cool. Taiwan, uh, and Hong Kong, I think. <laughs> you were too young to remember? <laughs> yeah, I was I was too young for those trips, but I've been to Vietnam, and those are, like, the trips that I remember. What, out of the trips you remember, what do you think is, like, the biggest life lesson uh, thing you've learned most important lesson because i traveled to europe which is kind of mm-hmm. basic but it was like the balkans so it wasn't like western europe with like germany and all that stuff yeah um, and i learned a lot of lessons and you learn a lot of things that are humbling when traveling uh, what oh, do you yeah, think for sure what do you think Arsene? um well since i went to go there to visit my family like my parents families like they're all from there you know yeah. we're the only family in canada so you know like i went there um like i haven't met my dad's side of the family yeah um and so we went to like some fucking deep in the countryside where it's just like (laughs) tropical trees and like mosquitoes and coconuts and shit like that (laughs) damn and like just little huts and um you know i was getting ready to film i'm like oh shit this could be really cool yeah you know and then we were taking the taxi and then we got there and then you just see like fucking not straw huts but like metal huts i don't know how to explain them i think i know what you they're, mean they're like met like metal sheets yeah yeah, and yeah, then yeah sure. they're just like yeah and um you know we finally get to i i got to meet my other uncles and aunts and um you know like i was sitting with my uncle and he was like i i never got to go to school like i have a third graders education and like we were too poor and they are they are really poor you know like they're really really poor Mm -hmm. and my my dad has like five siblings and then he could only give them like a hundred dollars each you know yeah but like a hundred dollars to them is like they could live off like five six months with the hundred dollars you know yeah well one thing about that is like when you are poor or don't have a lot of money you learn how to ration it and things like that yeah which is a which is can be a good skill um to have like i'm not Mm -hmm. saying it's a good thing to be poor but a lot of people nowadays (laughs) especially when they don't have money or like never had to work for money like uh i don't know i I don't know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna throw any names out there but um you get money and then you're just like oh new new shoes new this new that right and you never learn how to save and and ration that money yeah. And, and you think that's the most important thing, you know what I mean? Um, when it's really just all you need it for is to survive. Yeah, like, 
back then I was buying like Supreme and stuff, like a lot of it, you know, and stuff like that. And just Jordans, whatever I could get my hands on. And I was like, I was broke, dude. And then I started selling that shit. And now it's like, you can get so much better clothing from your local thrift shop. Definitely. And that's what I do now, you know? Better for the environment, better for, you know, reusing, oh, yeah, for sure. all that stuff. Um, yeah. And and also you're just saving money at the same time to use it for better yeah. things, uh, whatever you want. But you yeah. Know, yeah. Cool. And was there anything yeah. that you learned from them, from, from that talking, talking with your uncles, things like that? Oh, yeah. It's just like when you go to um, like a country to travel, and especially if you're a photographer like you expect to take uh footage or photos of like really good looking things right Mm -hmm. you know you want to let people know that you're in this really nice place and you're having fun but to get to the uh, like the good the good places sometimes you have to go through the bad Mm -hmm. you know like my friend went to jamaica one time and to go to a resort before he got to the resort he had to go through this like poverty ruined like city you know and like the resort is like the fucking backyard of these people that live in the city Mm -hmm. but they can never go there because they don't have the money for it yeah it's like a guilt trip before you actually get to have fun you know yeah like it's it's crazy because like all these resorts and things are just misrepresenting a country kind of thing exactly exactly um like when I was in Albania, for example, there's like these resorts everywhere. Uh, we were backpacking and like camping and stuff, so we never went to the resorts. But when you actually go into the city, mm. you and you meet people, like you 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 find out what what really happened there. Like we were literally talking to people um, in Bosnia, and they were telling us that they literally lived through the war and like they were bombing in their backyard and things like that. And we had like a full like three hour conversation with them to actually learn the history of the country and and what yeah. has happened where you're standing cuz yeah. history is very important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just feel it's really it's really important to be respectful to know like the history of where you're going. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, and what's going on? Like you don't it's like it's it's a bad thing to just go to a country and enjoy it for the weather, you know? You have to yeah. enjoy the country for what the country actually is, what's happened in the country, what's currently happening yeah. in the country. Um, because, like, we're all on the same team, dude. We're all humans and yeah. things like that. So just taking advantage of other people's weather and, and country, even though yeah. that's their land, you know what I mean? You know, that's why I don't go to resorts. Yeah, me neither. I used to go to resorts when I, you know, my, my parents took me to resorts and things like that. <laughs> now, like, when I travel, yeah. no thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so your go. What's your go-to camera setup right now? We're gonna wrap this up. This is the last two questions I ask everyone. Go-to mm. camera setup right now. What are you using? Minolta X7. Yeah, the film camera, <laughs> baby. Is it a good and one? Do you recommend it for people? Is that your first yeah, ever a, one? Yeah, this is my first film camera, and it's actually a really great camera uh, for for like beginners. Yeah. It's it's really great. Yeah. Like it te- like it has everything that you need to learn beautiful it's really simple to use but um yeah that's all i have (laughs) (laughs) that's all good hey Uh, you have the super eight too and the yeah but i can't film with it right now um (laughs) what's your dream do you have a dream setup you're looking at as far as film or digital goes like what camera do you think yeah like um further down the road when i start traveling more yeah after i finish schooling um I definitely want a Leica M6, which is like a $6,000 film camera. And the picture is like amazing. Yeah. Like it's super clean and sharp. I hope, dude, $6,000. Trust me, for $6,000, <laughs> you know, you better be. You better do my fucking math for me or some <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> okay, but that's but, sick, yeah. man. Um, there's a Canon... 514 XL or something like that. That's another super camera. Oh, okay. Probably one of the best on the market right now. Damn. Um, and for digital. Are you ever going to get want... back into digital, you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, really? Because the nostalgia effect, I want it to be like on a rare occasion, you know? Because mm-hmm. once you see it too much of super eight, then people get bored of it. Yeah, definitely. I feel. 
So like, yeah, I, I definitely want something like a Canon R6. I've heard good things but, about the R6. Yeah, but if we're talking like in the near future, I might go back because I sold my Canon 6D. Yeah, you might go back to that. To my friend, I might go back to that and buy another one because I love that camera. Especially when you know how it works and everything like that. Like. Yeah, yeah. It, like I have big hands. <laughs> like I, I have a unusually long pinky. Like I don't know. Yeah, your pinky does look very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that camera was it was heavy and bulky, but like it felt right in my hand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like the new cameras are smaller. Like I have the EOS R, but mm. I don't know. Like I, I kind of like it like that. Except my pinky does fall off the bottom, so. <laughs> I don't know. I usually use external stuff when I'm recording, like a top handle or something like that. I'm never yeah. actually holding the camera itself. Mm -hmm. But for photographers, it's definitely different. So if you're doing a lot of yeah. photo work, uh, having like a battery grip or something like that can definitely help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, any any final notes there? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> let people know the future of you, your future plans. Um, you can also plug yourself right now if you'd like people to go follow you on your platforms um, you guys can follow me at T X N Y L E. it's gonna be up on um, screen yeah uh you guys uh should look out for uh more film pictures uh, i got a lot more ideas coming up ahead uh in the near future hopefully covid dies down by next summer hopefully uh i really hope <laughs> to be traveling and making videos yeah um and put out new stuff that people haven't seen. Do you have a do you have a travel 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 idea of where you're gonna go next? Banff, uh, maybe Banff, maybe Iceland, maybe Switzerland. One of those three for sure. Keep an eye out on it, guys. Thank you for being on the podcast, man. Really appreciate it. We'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>